Okay, guys. Um, today I want to show to whoever is interested the potentiality of Open WRT. So, my router is a Linksys WRT 1900AC. It has four port gigabits. All the ports are gigabit and AC, whatever. But this is not the point. It's cool. So I install uh, Open WRT. So now this the website is down, but if you go here on this link, it's basically just you download the version, the right version for your thing, and then using the same way that you would, you know, update the stock firmware, you would update, you would put instead the Open VRT image. Cool. This is like once you go to one nine two one six eight dot one dot one, everything needs to be done by cable because wireless is disabled um, which is a good practice so now put my password cool so this is the status tells you you know the memory the client the TACP laces the status of your wireless once you enable it and the version so Lucy when you read Lucy is just the inter the web server so because of the open WRT Linux you can install multiple version of uh, the graphic interface cool um, on the status you can access like what's your firewall rules which tells you which one have been matched your routes which actually look like uh, look like an ARP ARP table and so this is so this is the thing uh, directly connected so metric zero means directly connected the WAN and then I guess I put one I should have probably I should put metric one instead of zero for my static round. Anyway, so in system is where you change where you change your setting for timing, language and style, boring stuff. Administration is that's important. Set set your LAN as the only way for SSH unless you are confident to SSH over the over the internet, which is can be useful if you use SSH gates. Um Wi-Fi, uh, this is pretty intuitive, you edit, you know, and you configure your Wi-Fi, it's pretty standard, like any other device. Cool, what I want to, like, why I love Open, open WRT is for the VLANing, inter-VLAN routing, firewall, and switching capability. You can really take the stock firmware, which has pretty much nothing on those features, and turn up your router in something that I like. It can be even work in a business. So if you go on the switch tab, you can see you can choose your VLAN, I have four four port for LAN. One port, port four is uh, I think is the when CPU port is pretty crazy port but I don't know what actually it is but it is it basically allows you to tag the VLAN so so they can inter they can be routed between them. So for example VLAN 16 can talk with VLAN 1 which can talk with VLAN 2. No, you cannot talk with VLAN 2 because it's a NAT. So that's why it's on is off on CPU. This IP it just nodded. So you cannot be routed to that VLAN. So VLAN 2 is when VLAN 2 is when, which means that it gets that this port gets a public IP address and those are your internal domain, so you do whatever you want. So the reason why it's, it's off on the CPU is because it doesn't need to be routed, but it needs to be not, so breached. Um, so basically CPU, you can basically, if you want, leave the default as untagged which is VLAN 1, which is, will be your 192.168.1 uh, 
the one to slash 24 network or like where your wireless and all the device in your home and uh, then you can start creating VLAN so for example I created so I created a VLAN so let's delete this and let's create a new VLAN so I can show you so let's say that I want to do a DMZ2 so let's say VLAN 111 same port I want to tag it save so now I have a VLAN right so let's say that I want this VLAN be able to be routed around then the first step one of the many steps is to tag the VLAN here on the CPU so now this VLAN has the potentiality to be routed to other VLAN now what I have to do is to uh, let me delete this interface now I have to add a new interface and I will gonna call a DMZ2 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 and this is the interface we have. so basically if you're coming from a Cisco world this will be an interface VLAN or a sub interface because basically all the four ports then your home router would have are seen by OpenWRT as a at zero as a single interface so you start putting your network 68.20.1 and then classical boring mask and I will not I'm not gonna bother to set up a DCP server but uh, anyway let's set it up that will erase so yeah that's pretty much what it is you can do options like as it was let me write again this 9.0 the one slash 24 and save it apply so now you have an interface you enable the CPU to do tagging and untagging so you can route between VLAN, what it means, why is grayed out because it's missing the last step firewall setting so do, 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 uh, I think I just already messed up, I have to clean up this one so now let's use the same settings that I did before so this is just just the settings So that's my firewall zone, right? So um, now I have the setting of the firewall zone. But let's say that you would have to uh, create it by yourself. I will save and apply just to make sure. You would have to go on firewall and add a new one or reusing like for me. So what this means is the this tested zone can go only on can talk only with um, when, which means that it basically can just do nothing. So traffic goes in from the internet and gets to to the one interface, which is then the get does the NAT to the DMZ if the, there is the client that didn't on the MZ. Then, then you can do traffic rules if you want to allow like for example on my DMZ see so I have the land that talk with any zone which is pretty you know I want to administer every zone so I need to talk from this lot from this laptop that I'm talking here I want to be able to administer like every zone so that's how you do it however I can, for example, SSH in testy, but testy cannot SSH in any other zone. So if I want to overwrite, overwrite that, I would have to create like this kind of rule. So, you know, SSH internal. So 
from any host in that to my peer-to-peer -peer network so point to point sorry point to point network which is connected to my internal lab so yeah diagnostic let's see what other feature are like firewall is pretty in intensive ah this is a cool one I almost forgot it so can you see that so I can do port but I can do um, inter VLAN port forwarding so per VLAN port forwarding so as you can see on my port 32 um, so on my public IP address on port 32 get statically port forward on this host on port 22 which is in this in a different LAN in a different VLAN different zone different DMZ different firewall zone and same thing here I can do SSH test 2 and from port 43 I can go to my DMZ so for show you that works there is pretty a lot of line tool like this is on port 32 and I can do it and then the other one was port 42 42 or let's see double check 43 so 43 and just for completion's sake let's see if I have an SSH okay, no SSH I guess I could do something like that I'm using the key so SSH no that doesn't doesn't have to show you dash B thirty two uh, not really I screw up get refused because it gets translated so because it does forward translation the firewall does also the it doesn't go outside and then come back I cannot show you this but as you can see that the port is open from the internet cool um, Let's see what other cool thing. Ah, yeah, of course you have static routes. You can even change the metric, MTU, if you want to talk. Like if you have like some uh, jumbo frames or something going on, so you can do that feature. You can do also QoS. However, you need to SSH on the server and do Q, yeah, QoS, quality of service it's not easy, you know why I think it's not easy is the only reason is because uh, depend, it's not like you're gonna have your Red Hat ter terminal, right? Um, it's not like you're gonna have your Red Hat terminal is gonna be a lot of difference and a lot of strange configuration at least for me I never deal with Linux routing and like I mean I never had to do configure a switch and a router in like pure Linux so to me they look like they're not Linux like configuration like of course you can do your IFE config you know and you know or route dash and you know those kind of thing however all the CPU and things is pretty different and IP tables is not my strength part so unfortunately I cannot show you that anyway um, my consideration is if your router supports open, f open source firmware I think you should go full power because it really you really um, enhance the functionality and you almost get what Cisco and Juniper give you 
obviously the hardware won't be that reliable, but uh, having a busy busy home or like if you have a busy, I'm not telling you like get rid of your Cisco for OpenVRT, but like if you have the shitty link uh, firmware that lets you that doesn't let you do anything, then go ahead. Another one is WR, the no, DDR, WRT, which look like more easy because you can pretty much do everything from the web interface. Otherwise, my router wasn't there. So they have a pretty cool feature that you can search for the router database. Cool. I think that's it. Happy. Enjoy, enjoy with the if you decide to go with the open source firmware. And yeah, that's it for today. Thanks, thanks for whoever watched it, if ever.